Praise God. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all God's people said. Amen. All God's people said. Amen. All God's people said. Amen. Father, we, we thank you for the, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the paraclete. The Holy Spirit is the lawyer. The Holy Spirit defends us. The Holy Spirit enlightens us. The Holy Spirit gets us through. So come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of these faithful and start a new fire within us so that your name will be glorified through all the ages. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Turn to the person next to you. You're going to learn really good stuff tonight. Now there's a report that every third person is really good looking. Turn to the person next to you and say, I'm that person. Oh. <laughs> okay, now, if you get your swords, we're going to um, look at 1 Corinthians. As we finish chapter 2, we took a long time going through the chapter. Amen? Did, did you enjoy chapter 2? And then we'll um, be uh, having some spin-offs and uh, into the Holy Spirit. Spirit. You know what I discovered? I'm sure you have two by now. There's so much to say on the Holy Spirit. Have you discovered that yet? Yes. And you know, um, I'm crying with you because there's so much to say on the Holy Spirit, but we haven't heard it. And so as a result, we called them the Holy Ghost. Okay, I, I was asked to kind of do a little review with you because I want to go tonight into um, uh, kind of a deep section on how to be naturally supernatural uh, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Ever say naturally supernatural. Naturally supernatural. Now, when you were made, God said He'd never do that again, but you weren't naturally supernatural. You were a natural pain in the neck. And that means you would always get in trouble, and that means you, you, you like sinning a lot. Amen? Amen? I turned to the person the next to you and said, That was you. <laughs> that was you. Okay. So, the mic is up. Can you hear me? This mic is up. Okay, so if, if, you, uh, if you go with me to um, uh, chapter 2 of 1 Corinthians. Are you there? Mm -hmm. uh, we've been looking at um, verse 10, and we, we've been doing a lot of it. God has revealed to us through the Holy Spirit. Did you hear that? God is, comes to you through the Holy Spirit. So how can we not have known about the Holy Spirit? Now remember an interesting phenomenon that's going on. Where there's teaching and preaching about the Holy Spirit, the church grows. Where there's no teaching about the power of the Holy Spirit, there's no growth. You look like this, you die like this, I mean you're coughing like this, alright? You might as well be planted already. So there's really no life in this, the, the Holy Spirit, amen? Are, are, are you getting this? And for the Spirit searches everything, so the Holy Spirit is a searcher. He goes into the depth, and the time that you became born again through your baptism and saying yes to God, the Holy Spirit went into you and married your soul. Okay? And that's why Mary can say, um, my, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. So, and holy is His name. So, because she's rejoicing in the Spirit, she names the Holy Spirit holy. Holy is His name. You got that? And the word for holy is hagios, which means I am so separated from this guy. How many ever got married? Say you married a man named Michael. When you, are, when you marry a man named Michael, that means you've got to be separated away with him. Yes? You've got to be with him and you two go away into the wilderness and that's it. That's the last we ever see of you. So, um, for what person knows a man's thoughts except the spirit of a man? which is in him. Now we're going to get into that in a, in, in a few seconds because we're going, to, we're going to distinguish today between what is natural in you and what is supernatural. Now, what, what we're going to do is we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to open our minds to live naturally in the supernatural. If you learn this tonight, you'll never be the same. In fact, you'll really glow in the dark. Okay, you ready to blow in the door? Yes. And you'll make your pasta never the same again. I'll tell you that much. Okay, amen? amen. Okay, so we're going to learn how to be naturally supernatural. And amazing things are going to begin to happen. So, um, so also, no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit. 
Now remember in Isaiah 55, God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, your thoughts my ways are not your ways. Now how can I have God's thoughts unless I have the Holy, Holy Spirit? Spirit? Now how many here would like to bring forth in your lives God's thoughts and God's ways? I'll tell you a very simple way to do it, okay? You know, everything that we share with you, it's simple. I really hope never to go over your head. In order to make God's thoughts your thoughts, God's ways your ways, you got to do what God does. What does that mean? Let's break it down further. You've got to practice a life of justice for all people. Now, who did that? Remember Superman? Justice for all. Remember? So, when you practice justice for all people, you're making God's thoughts your thoughts. In fact, even when you live in justice, what you're seeing is the power of the Holy Spirit will be further released inside of you. Because the Holy Spirit is a living entity. What's the Holy Spirit? It's the love between the Father and the Son. Now, let me explain that further to us. Jesus right now is personally sitting next to Abba Father. Everybody got that? Now, you're going to see him soon. In, 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 a, few, in a few days, you're absolutely going to see him because he's coming soon. He told me he's coming soon, so pack your bags. In fact, you can put nothing in your bags anyway, so you got nothing to pack. When the Father is looking at the Son and the Son is looking at the Father, there's a dynamic power going between them. That's the Holy Spirit. Now when you have the Holy Spirit beginning at your baptism, that was the dynamic power going on inside of you. And when that power goes on inside of you, you become alive. Now, when you become alive, there's certain things that automatically begin to happen to you. In Romans chapter 14, verse 17, you know how to walk with God. Number one, it's called righteousness. And number two, you have incredible peace. If you're not in peace, you don't have the Holy Spirit. And thirdly, you have the joy of the Holy Spirit. You see with Granny on the Beverly Hillbillies, I got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. And she was with Jethro Bodine, who was a sixth grade graduate. Right? So how many can see all that evidence right now? This is only for you, by the way. Now we have received, if you underline there, verse 12, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit. Now, the expression, did you receive the spirit? How many ever heard of that? In the first century, they did not say, are you a born again Christian? The word born again Christian comes only at the beginning of the 20th century. By, uh, by, uh, by Protestants who will say to you, um, are you a born again Christian? In the first century, that did not exist. What exists is, did you receive the Holy Spirit? Galatians chapter 3. Did you receive the Holy Spirit? So now, if you kind of circle with me there, verse 12, we have received, not the Spirit of the world, Paul puts a little comment there, but the Spirit. So, we have received, but the Spirit. Everybody see that there? That's being born again. Okay, ask the person next to you, did you receive the Holy Spirit? Give him a chance to respond. Now, if you receive the Holy Spirit, that's that's the question, are you born are you a born again Christian? That's how they said it back then. I'll give you another passage which you know, Galatians 3. Acts chapter 19. Did you receive the Holy Spirit? Remember what they responded? I don't even know there is a Holy Spirit. Today I was with a gentleman and he was asking me questions that were so basic I went, Wow, does this guy need teaching? And he went through the sacramental system of the church and everything else. So Holy Spirit, hell! Which is from God, which we might understand the gifts bestowed on us. Now, when you receive the Holy Spirit, did you receive the Holy Spirit? Did you? Yes. You sure? Yes. When you receive the Holy Spirit, what happens immediately? Yes. Gifts. How do you say gifts? Gifts. Gifts. Carmen's or the charismata? Now I wish we were taught that when you have the Holy Spirit, you have the gifts. Now when we all made our confirmation, 
we learned the gift, the, the sevenfold gifts of the Spirit from Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. Do you remember that? But how many know, if you got that, that means there's an empowering in you to live for others. These are not for me. These are for you. Imagine if you went to church that everybody has the Holy Spirit. They said, I got gifts that you don't have. Now, so then you would say, use them, use them. And if we all use the gifts of the Holy Spirit, what kind of church will we have? On fire. You got it. But guess what? Did the people receive the Holy Spirit? Are they born again? Do they have this living relationship with Yeshua HaMashiach? Which is uh, from God, we, we might understand the gifts we so we might understand. Now today when Solomon says, give me a heart to understand. You know what the Hebrew means? He said, give me that which I can hear from you. That's what he was saying to God. That's what the Hebrew is. That's what he said in Hebrew. I want to hear you. And so when he became that wisest man, you know what, you know, when he became the wisest man? He was hearing from God because he wrote Ecclesiastes, he wrote some of the songs. Remember all those wonderful three books he wrote? Because he was hearing from God. He had, you know, not, not the angel and the devil on each other's soldiers. He heard from God. And I personally believe that it, as we grow in the Lord, you can hear God's audible voice. But the reason why probably everybody here hasn't heard it, you're too noisy. You're too engaged in many earthly affairs. You see, so when Solomon asked today, you know what he was saying? Don't give me the possessions. Make me a man of character. It's all about my personal character. Good stuff? Okay, this is still review. Why am I reviewing this? And we impart this in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit. Right now, this is going to be a shocker. The Holy Spirit doesn't use words. Of your kind. Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46.10 Inside of us he groans. Inside of us he goes into the depth of our spirit. Because it's the love affair between the Father and the Son. Let me, let me give you for example. In Matthew 11.25 Jesus says to us these words. Father, only I know, I only, I alone know you. Nobody else knows you except me. Nobody. And then the Father says, Son, nobody knows you except me. And in between, between them, there's going this dynamic of the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus says, Ah, the little ones we choose to reveal it to. That's what he says. All right now, those who block the Holy Spirit are these people. And these people live in, in, in natural. I'm going to get in trouble, but I won't get in trouble. I'll be good. A lot of people can't hear God. My German grandmother said, get rid of your potatoes. Anybody got potatoes? We got to be unclocked. How many ever had that? The, the doctor clearing out your ears. Were you amazed all the gunk that came out? Mm -hmm. You weren't amazed. Now, that's because we're in the natural. But I want to. I want to go on in a minute. When you're in the natural, listen. You don't seek. God. When people come before God, do you want to hear a homily, a sermon? Do you want to hear something for you? How many enjoy hearing something that's really good? Yeah. Most people in the views don't come for that. Let's get it over with. They're not going to hear anything. 
They're not going to hear God. They came in empty. They're leaving empty. All right, now, here are the people that are natural. Number one, they have no spiritual dimension. That's a scary thing to say. There is no spiritual dimension. Number two, they can't accept the things of God. How many know we're living in a day and age where people don't accept the things of God? I realize my life is in danger because as it goes on, people aren't going to listen to what I say. I got invited, praise God, to go to Vancouver. And I said to the lady who invited me, do you believe in God? She smiled, we do. I said, that's good. And uh, when I go there, can I preach anything I want? She said, yeah. I said, I won't be thrown out of Canada. <laughs> she said, no, you, it's okay up in Vancouver. I said, I'll be up there. I'll run right out as soon as I can and, and get, get back into the U.S. for now. The third thing is when you live in the nature, you can't know God experientially. The fourth thing is you don't have the Holy Spirit as a receiver. You've been taught to give, 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 and please God that you're all good givers, but how many here have been taught to receive? Did you receive the Holy Spirit? Now, as I shared with you ending last week, this is your incarnational moment. Mary was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Guess what? We are conceived and received by the Holy Spirit. See the word right in there? Received. She was conceived. We are received. Interesting. You got the difference? Did you receive the Holy Spirit? And then I, then I ended by saying, we're going to be spiritual people. What is a spiritual person? A spiritual person is someone who lives supernaturally. What does that mean? Supernaturally is God giving you a life that you couldn't possibly live unless His Spirit was alive in you. Okay? Now, we told you all things are spiritual. We told you 1 Corinthians 6. But let's look at this now because there's two group of people that are going to rise up in verse number 14. Then we're going to go on a little journey. Okay, now, are you spiritual or unspiritual? You got to look at the Greek to really to really get this. Unspiritual or the unspiritual man does not receive the gifts of the Spirit. Did you hear that? Most people in church don't want the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And then we have the spiritual. When I was going through this study, uh, the Greek bears out a totally different lesson than you and I reading it in English. The unspiritual men, this is, they're called psychikois. You know you're a psychikoi baby? Is this good? So those who don't want the gifts of the Spirit, uh, please don't, please don't scare them. They're psychicoids. Now, those of us who want the Spirit, we're called pneumaticoids. All right. So these are the two types of per person: psychicoid or pneumaticoid. Are you getting that? If they're unspiritual, there are what? No what? No character. When I trace the history of the church, the, some of the great saints that you were, you're in love with, 
they were over here and they did signs, wonders, and miracles. Those in the church that were unspiritual didn't believe in the gifts. So, no gifts, no matter what, are the gifts of the Spirit. Now, when you're spiritual, when you're spiritual men and women, there's such a blessing that can come upon you. But I want to teach you how to grow in that tonight. Okay? Here's what I want to happen. I want you to hear from God. I want you to know with pinpoint accuracy you're hearing from God. Turn to person and say, this is really good. Now, psychicoids or pneumaticoids? Unspiritual or spiritual? Yes? Now, when we come to the ultimate, ready? This is so good. This is really good. When we grow in the Lord, there's a shift that goes all the way down to the mind of Christ. Jesus is the man filled with the Holy Spirit. In Luke chapter 4, verse 1, and Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, when he was going out to the battle with Satan, and we battle Satan every day, do you know the Bible says shockingly? Led by the Spirit. Wait a minute. Led by the Spirit? Jesus is going out after he gets baptized, led by the Spirit to fight the devil? That doesn't sound too good, does it? But because you and I don't live for this earth and down here, so to speak, even though this is how we got our beginnings, We've got to be led by the Spirit to defeat the power of hell around us. And that's why we've got to be on to use the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will help us to understand what they are. And then when we understand this, we can think like Christ. So guess what, everybody? Here's the shock. You're the mind of Christ. Now, when you're in the mind of Christ, guess what starts happening? Now, if I have Jesus' mind right now, what starts happening? I can hear it. I share with you many times revelation that God gives me. And the revelation comes and he'll say, don't go over there. Say this. And I told you the gift that he's given me. He'll say, flip to this part in the Bible. I don't have notes in front of me. He'll just say, do that. So he's, he's opening my mind. Now, how did I get that mind? Because I immersed myself in what his mind is, the Word of God. And so I can, I can think of what the Word of God is. So let's go through this, and then we're going to go on another, we're going to go on an interesting journey to get you thinking. Now, we can all have the mind of God in Christ. We'll be there in a second. Okay, everybody with me? The unspiritual man, how do you say that? Psychicoi does not receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit of God. So when a person is not redeemed, you're going to see no gifts of the Holy Spirit operating in them. What does it mean to have a gift of the Holy Spirit in you? To have a gift of the Holy Spirit in you, you're so filled with life that you know how to touch people's lives with the life that you are. You see, most of us are content to go to a church service today and go home and nobody's changed in our house. Nobody. Why? Because you look the same, you smell the same. And guess what? There's no operation in the power of the of the Spirit. So even though you went to church today, you look like everybody else. Miss Lisa? Are these people that do that? Are these people? Probably not. Are the psychic coins redeemed? Probably not. So you've got to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Amen? Now watch this. This is really good. You get good stuff? The unspiritual man does not receive the gifts of the Spirit, for they are folly to him. And I say folly, remember? Moron. It's ridiculous. 
And see, on this side, if I come across using the gifts of the Spirit, they'll say to me, I don't believe in that. Very dangerous thing to say. Because in Matthew 13, they call Jesus Beelzebub. And Jesus did great things. What happened when Jesus was going to court and they heard all the great things and all the miracles he did? For second place. What do people say today about the Holy Spirit? Oh, that was only the first century. I want to knock their lights out. And you know what they say? You know, it's the first century, you know why? Because they really needed it back then. Hello? <laughs> they need to really get going. I needed to say, get my life stabilized. Now here's revelation knowledge for you that we believe is going to come. God is going to soon going to unleash this section one more time. It's going to be so powerful that every one of you are going to have the mind of God in Christ. So what happens if I have the mind of God in Christ? I become a what? A counselor. Are you getting this? Now watch this. Is this, is this good? And he is unable to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Okay, now, on this side, when I'm a pneumaticoid, everything is processed through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's mind. He takes everything in and out of me, right? It's processed. Not processed food. <laughs> Everything goes through the Holy Spirit when I'm in love with the Holy Spirit. I might have an idea and all of a sudden I said, no, 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 it's got to go through the Holy Spirit. Maybe last week you saw Damien up there and he just said we're going to do something. I said, no, no, no. It's being processed. And, and so it's got to, there's no process over here. They just make a blanket statement, no, we're not going to understand. We don't understand the Holy Spirit. And what's going to happen soon, now, is that there's going to be men and women like you going to wake up to the Holy Spirit and really act in the power of the Holy Spirit. Until you do that, not a lot of people's lives are going to be changed in this town. The attendance is going down, the collection is going down, everything's going down. Because we, we don't do that. The spiritual man, all right, here's the spiritual man. How do you say that? Numantico. The pneumaticoid that does this, he judges all things. Now, does it say all people? No, all things. Now, let me let me let me tell you what all things means. If if you underline this, all things mean everything through spiritual lenses. Let me give you an example. A prayer example. You come up to me and say, "Pray that my son gets a job." Did you ever say that? Remember I told you how to go through spiritual lenses. I pray for your son to get a, a walk with God job. Okay, go ahead, pray for that. But what were you focused in on? You're focused in on just the material. So what do I do? I, do? I gotta go through spiritual lenses. Now, the, all things there, all things in Greek mean spiritual. What is it? So let's reread that. The spiritual pneumaticoid judges all spiritual things. So if I'm in the spirit, now how do I judge all things? By the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, because I have another powerful thing going on in there. What's the powerful thing in there? I get discernment. Many times I get a sense when I pray over people, that person's not going to be healed. You know why? Because they haven't had an attitude of an altitude. They don't go higher. Sometimes they fight me. It's okay. I said, you need to, I, I do that already. I said, <coughs> and I'll fight them. I said, no, you don't. That's what my spirit said. I'm discerning. Now, how many would like to have the power of discerning. Ready? Ready to Sh shift gears? This is really good. Are you getting this, man? Yes. But he himself is to be judged by no one. Now, 
this is not a, I don't judge you. Now, judging means what? I pass the sentence on you, you're going to hell. No, it's passing a sentence. Everybody's got that really mixed up and, and they're messed up with that one. I never heard one of you, thanks be to God, say that one's going to hell. I'll say, does it look good? So, because the discernment is, I discern what's spiritual. When you know the Spirit said, is this of God? Or is it that's of God? How many ever had one of those discernments? When I, have, when, I, when I say what's of God, then I have the mind of Christ. Now, then he says there, if you know in there, for who has known the mind of the Lord so as to, to instruct him? Who's know what God's thinking? Now here's the answer. We do. Is that a mind-blowing statement? I know what he's thinking. Turn to the first section. I know what God's thinking. Is that a mind-blowing statement? I told you the story about a thousand times. A lady came up to me. God told me something. I said, okay, I think you want to tell me what he said. Yeah, he told me to divorce my husband. I said, he didn't say that. But you don't know him. He's a jerk. I said, honey, you picked him and you stuck with him. <laughs> she said, God said that. God doesn't say to do that. God doesn't go against his word. How many would like to know if you're hearing God? There's peace in your soul. And it never attacks a person. Amen? Now, Which side are you on? The psychic voice? <laughs> now, how do you say mind in, in Greek? No, no. Suke. Does that look familiar? Oh, boy. What's your most torturous part, everybody? Your mind. Your mind. My question to you is, and this is a serious question, how do you possibly live with you? <laughs> okay, so do you see a similarity? Yes. It's the same word. It's the word for mind. Notice we have what? It's not the same word. We who are spiritual, we don't have suke because our minds can't think up because our minds are what? Dark. Now let me give you a Bible verse. If you make a right, and we're going to be traveling now. Is this good stuff? Go with me. Make uh, I, I say right? Yeah, go right. Now watch this. Make a right. Go to Ephesians again. Go to Ephesians. And then we're going to go to the Philippines. So, and then we're going to, then we're going to really do some traveling now. All right, if you go with me to one eighteen. If we have the Holy Spirit, we've got to pick up book of eighteen. Everybody with me, eighteen. Having the eyes of your heart enlightened, then you can, let me back up please to um, 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom. That's the Holy Spirit. And a revelation. Now what does revelation mean? Let me tell you, when you have the Holy Spirit. Revelation means God is telling you something without a book. How many like that? How is the Holy Spirit going to be shown to you through revelation? How many ever had the blessing of saying something to somebody you don't know where it came from? Revelation. How many know the Holy Spirit works in you through Revelation. 
We should hide and do a whole class on just Revelation. So what do you get? You get wisdom. That means to really know how to put things together. Sophia. And you get revelation. I believe I'm at a stage now. When you bring something to me, I can say, that's not of God. That's a great gift to have, isn't it? Wisdom and revelation. Now, this, this is really good. When you have wisdom and revelation together, wisdom, this is done over here, okay? Wisdom plus revelation equals the flow of the Spirit. How many like that? Now, the Holy Spirit is teaching the church a new thing. Ready for this? We are now calling what the Holy Spirit is doing a current of grace. The current of grace. Good? Yes. I'm still not done. I didn't even get to my point. <laughs> Having the revelation in the knowledge of Him. So how do I get this revelation? You know, after 48 years, I'm finally, it's finally, I'm putting it together like never before. I can sit, the gift that I believe the Holy Spirit's giving me, and hear somebody talk up there and preach up there in a second. That's not, that's not it. I just shake my I, I better hide in the back so I don't uh, disturb the, the speaker. That's not it. And one thing I personally hate is falsehood. I hate it. I want the truth. And so when I hear X, Y, and Z up there giving the talk, no, 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 no. I even heard some famed people get up and said something. They got all the credentials and they said the back. I said, no, 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 that's not revelation. Wisdom and revelation is to flow from the spirit that current appears. Now, I still get there. Now, here's what's going to happen. If you want to become pneumaticoids, that's a psychicoids. You psyche. Here's what he says having the eyes of your hearts enlightened. What happens then? Here we get. I begin to open my eyes. That means my whole spirit radiates. Who did that before? Mary. My eyes are enlightened. Guess what happens? Wait, I'll be right back. <laughs> when my eyes are enlightened, I get wisdom. But as I'm getting witness, I understand what God is doing, what the Word of God says, I get it. That's the mind of Christ. When this becomes, when Adam and Eve sinned, this was cast into such darkness. That's why you live with interesting people who say stupid things. Their minds are darkened. Let me give you more scripture on that. You can turn the page over to Ephesians 4, verse 17. See it there? Ephesians 4, 17. They are darkened in their understanding. Verse 18. You can't live in the mind of God in Christ if you're dark. How do you know that I'm in the dark? Because with my revelation of my, it comes out from my mouth. 
you'll hear things. So I can't say to you, whoa, look at her, look at, no, I, that's not my talk. I only speak the mind of God in Christ. So you're never going to hear out of me as a believer, you're not going to hear garbage talk ever coming out of my mouth. Do you see the connection? Right now, this is a long, I, I didn't get to my material yet, this is a long, I hope this is uh, filling you up. I turn the page now to Philippians 2. I, I'm trying to get us to get into the mind of God in Christ. Everybody understand the difference here? Yes, yes. Good stuff? <laughs> okay, let's go on our journey to get into the mind of Christ. And I, I still don't teach you how to live in the supernatural. He says to us in chapter 2, if you go all the way down to verse 5, have this mind among yourselves. What mind is that? What suke is that? Don't become a suki koi. A psyche koi. Have this mind among yourselves, which was in Christ Jesus. This is it. You want to think like Jesus? Ready? Put away every ambition you have. Oh, wait a minute, I can't do that. I want to be the Archbishop one day. What do you mean, put away that Archbishop? I, I want to rule power. I want heads to roll, baby. Put away all ambition. Jesus, who is God, did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at. He could have said, look, I'm God. Don't mess with me, baby. And one of my favorite scriptures is, you know why you can't mess with me? My father owns all the cattle on all the hill. Don't mess with me. You want to have, you want to have Christ thinking? Really think like him? You know why there were three children of Fatima and they were all hurt? Because they didn't have any ambitions. They were thinking, uh, you know, I'm going to be the greatest fisherman the next town over was Nazare. I'm going to go to Nazare and do fishing. Besides, I, I ate one of their shrimp ones. Scariest looking dude I've ever seen. They don't clean them like we do over here. They had the antennae and scare the bejeebers out of me. I said, what is that? That's your dinner. I said, I'm going to McDonald's. Where is that? Put away all your ambitions. When you do that, put, it, put them to death. Now, how many think that's going to harm? What do we say to all the kids? Hi, hi. What do you want to be when you grow up? My favorite response when I asked this uh, uh, second grader, what do you want to be? She looked at me. Without batting an eye, she said, a mother. <laughs> I said, you got it, you get the prize. <laughs> Did you ever hear that response from a second grader? A mother. A mama. I think she put away all ambition. Amen? So, if you want to think like Jesus, here's your, here's your checkpoint. Did I put away my ambitious thoughts? And you know where ambition runs very thick? We're always vying for positions. We're always manipulating. Next, if one of the mind, the second thing, you got to humble yourself. You see, when Solomon said today, "I'm only a child," you know how old he was? Twenty-five. I mean, you're twenty-five. You're calling yourself a kid? <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff, man. He's only about twenty-five. Yeah. He says, "I'm a not R." And he had the dream, and the dream came with miracles can come true, they can happen to you. He's only doing fine. So how many here can put away all your ambitions? Put, and, and in fact, here's, 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 put it to death. And next it says this, humble yourself. 
Humble yourself. You don't have to be well thought of. When I follow the 52 days in the life of Jesus, here's what I discovered. He wasn't well thought of. In Mark 3.21, they thought he was a loon in June. He got kicked out of synagogues and temples. and He, he, he was really, really put aside. Yes, ma'am. All right, now, anybody have a thought? Ma'am? No. Do you have a thought? No. All right, now we're going to go to how to live in the supernatural. Does everybody get how to get into the mind of Christ now? How many think the Holy Spirit needs to do some more work on you? Everybody, please raise your hand. Yes, that's right. Yes. Come on, Holy Spirit. Did you receive the Holy Spirit? Yes. Okay, okay. Are you getting this, ma'am? Yes. All right, now. The Holy Spirit was showing me a lot of things today. And guess what? Revelation. So, I'm going to go to a passage to show you how to live in the supernatural. In fact, there's some shocking verses there. Okay, are you getting this? Are you getting this? You got to call her up later? She's saying maybe. Okay, you, 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 you got, I, I want you to live in the Holy Spirit. And now, everybody flip. Go all the way back to the prophet Ezekiel. Now, this is used about the Holy Spirit a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Are you a psychic boy? Or a pneumatic boy? You are, ma'am? Are you sure? Alright, go, go with me, please, to chapter 36. It, it's on page 723. It'll go all the way down to 3626. Alright, now we're going to learn how to live in the supernatural. And then I'm going to pray over you, right? I, I just heard a teaching and that if I lay hands on you, it's so you can know that you're in the hand of God. Okay, now we're going to... Uh, now we're all living in the natural... How do you say natural? Natural. Psychic boy, right? So now we're going to go into the naturally... Supernatural. Now, if you pray with me on this, this is like a workshop, isn't it? If you pray with me on this, you will actually see the power of God. Are you getting this, ma'am? Okay. Which chapter are we in, Father? Ezekiel 36, 26. Good stuff? Now, I want to give you a lot of Catholic interpretation because I think that's what you want on this, but a lot of explosion interpretation. I just need to give you a little update passage. Pope Benedict XVI said a couple of weeks ago, the Catholic Church has just capsized. We're treading water. Second thing, he, uh, second thing he said is, um, uh, second thing is, we're imploding. Everybody know what that means? We're exploding. In. And unless we get into the Holy Spirit, and uh, I'm giving us a little bit of a warning. We need to stick together. I agree with Benedict XVI. We are imploding and we are capsizing. And right now, you're going to discover across the board, people are drowning toward their spiritual deaths. And the Holy Spirit has, is showing me, we got to get, you got to understand this. I mean, you got to understand it. Did I say you got to understand it? Yes. That's why you got to stop me if you don't. All right? Amen? Amen. Holy Spirit, help me to explain it better if they don't understand it, because I may not even understand it. Now, Ezekiel speaks of a death. 
when the Holy Spirit's coming. This is the Ezekiel, I'm making up of my adjective, this is the Ezekiel version of the Holy Spirit, which is the true Holy Spirit. Verse 26. A new heart I will give you and a new spirit. Now, here's what God's doing. If we're going to live supernaturally, you've got to live in the new. Remember I told you many times, I didn't say new? Kind of, agree. What does it mean to be new? That which never existed. Now, here's what I'm saying to you. Do you want to live in the supernatural with me? Ready? You can't live the life you're now living. In Ezekiel 44, I, I told the people once before, and they loved the little mini teaching I gave. I said, if you're really following God, you've got to come in one door to the church and leave through another one. And some, some of my people literally are doing that every Sunday. I'm going out a different door. Because I want to be changed from glory to glory. So now what God says is, the new is, you got to get a new heart. Can I tell you something about your heart, man? It's not good sometimes. And then a new what? All right, now, what, happened? what does Ezekiel say? They're what? They're linked. Probably everybody here had the experience with the interesting people in your house. Oh, my heart, oh, my heart, oh, my heart. Oh, my soul, oh, my soul. You've got to get a new heart because the old one has got to go. You got to get his spirit. Remember, we told you what the spirit is. Okay? Remember, all those things that come in. If you have the Holy Spirit, then guess what happens to your life? You know how to live like you never have lived before. Now, I don't care how long you've been a Christian, I believe you have a new day tonight. I, I got to try to go slow so you get this. Now he says to us there, I will take out your flesh. Now this was the flesh. We've been dealing in Paul. The flesh is not good. Paul says in Galatians 5 and 16, there's a war going on right now inside you. It's your flesh versus the Holy Spirit. And you and I have won so many battles not in the spirit, but we allow our flesh to knock out the spirit. We have all done that. From our eating, to the way we speak to one another, we have all regretted what our flesh has done. It's gotten out of hand. Men and women naturally in the supernatural don't do that. What God has to do is do an operation on the flesh and he has to pull out of you the stone. I told you many times that's why he wrote the Ten Commandments on the stone. Now an interesting thing when God wrote the Ten Commandments. Does everybody know this? When the tablets were written by God, here's how God wrote it in the original. You're the only ones on your block that know this. He wrote one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Why did he write it like that? Because he wants to show us one has got to be related to six. I'm a Lord thy God, thou shalt not have strange gods before me, thou shalt not commit adultery. Mm. 
So if you take each of the commandments and link them up, that's how God purposed to write them. How many know we missed that one? You never heard that before, man. You're getting fresh man. Did you ever hear that, man? You know who shared that with us, ma'am? Oh. Rabbi Finkel. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's the day you walked in late. Mm -hmm. But how will you save your seat anyway? So now, coming in to our hearts is such a power of relationship. Here's what Ezekiel says. Is this good? I will put within you I will take out of your flesh the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I'll put my spirit within you. God's spirit cannot come into us with your stone. It's got to be taken out. Or how do you get it taken out? Surgery? Good idea. How do I get, how do I get, because I got to do what? No more ambitions? No, no, here's what you say. Here I am, Lord, kick, swish, kick, kick. Now, stop the music. We've got to finally meet the words. When we live like that, do you know Mother Teresa heard the audible voice of God? You know, Sister Breeze McKenna heard the audible voice of God? We haven't lived like that. And so, what God wants to do is reach and take out the flesh. When you live naturally, supernaturally, I don't wake up in the morning saying, what am I going to do today? How am I going to serve you? How am I going to have the mind of God in Christ? So if I can think like Jesus, wow. Ma'am. That is awesome. Father Bill, uh this is as deep as you're going to get. I, I can't even imagine going any further than this. We, we, can, we can do a whole study just on Right on that, these commandments. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to develop the Ten Commandments for That'd you in awesome. a new way. Awesome. I'm going to go in and I'm going to do something which you've been crying for. I'm going to show you how to do a, an act of... Uh, 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 examination of time. Examination of time. I'm going to show you how to do that. If you, if you, I'm going to show you how to do that and get rid of your, your gunk and your sins and your iced tea remains that sit at the bottom, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Um, lately. Lately, you guys speak louder because it's going around the world. Well, lately, uh, the Lord has been laying on my heart. Lately, the Lord's been laying on my heart. Created me a pure heart, O oh Lord. Created me a pure heart, O oh Lord. Oh Lord. Psalm 51. Yeah, and renew a steadfast spirit. Renew a steadfast spirit. Now, here's what we got to pray if you're going to live in the supernatural. Get rid of the flesh. I can give you right now all good things about all your problems. But guess what? No. I want to go back to the flesh. I want to feel sorry for myself. I'd like to look at my wounds. You've got to have a new heart now. With the Holy Spirit comes brand new emotions. With the Holy Spirit comes a brand new focus. So when I'm living supernaturally in that, now watch this, we're going to get to a word that really is going to surprise you. Are you getting this, ma'am? This is so incredible. You said it so fast. Did, did you get the second one? Emotions and focus. That's focus. You should be clean from all your... Now, um, watch this. is really good. That's powerful. I will take you... Um, wait a minute. Where, where, where am I going here? I will take you from... I just lost my place. Oh, verse 26. I will give you out of the flesh the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. How many seem like a must from God? I will cause you to do this. Doesn't that sound like somebody on the other side is going to, going to really make me do this? Not a make in the make sense. But when I get a new heart and spirit, I'm not going back. I'm going, I'm going in a door and out of the door. 
Not the same way. Maybe you might want to try that little drill. It'll be fun. You go in one door of the church and out the other. Michael's not going to understand what the heck you're doing, but anyway, so, you know, just but we got to go out the different door. Now, when that happens, when you get into the temple of God, Ezekiel 44, that's what they did. They went in and out. That, that's an amazing fact. Good stuff? Now, very good. And so when you have a new heart and a new stone, uh, the stone is gone, you're, you're going to live in the supernatural. Because now listen, listen, listen. God says, that's the Holy Spirit. I will cause you. So, listen. How many here believe you surrender to God? Oh yeah, raise your hand. Yeah, I did. I surrender. Oh, kick, 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 kick. When you surrender to God, ma'am, you don't do what you used to do. You do things that are spiritual. Your thoughts are really different than most people's. So guess what? They're going to call you living on Mars. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because God is causing me to do this. Did you hear that? Now, what does he say there? I will put within you put within me, so God's going to do this, I will put my spirit within you, cause you, cause you, cause you, cause you, to walk in my statutes and be careful to observe my... I'm going to just do what God wants. So if I do what God wants, I'm living above what I used to do. I'm just going to watch this. Um, you shall dwell in the land which I gave your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. Now, if, if you box in, there's your marriage. There's your mystical marriage. I'm so joined to him. Now, when all of this happens, I read another translation. Does anybody have a different translation? It says a strange word when I read this in a different translation. It says, this is what I'm going to do. God, I can't figure you out sometimes. God says, this is what I'm going to do to you naturally. Wait a minute. I want to get into the supernatural. But God says, I'm going to do this to you naturally so you can be naturally into the supernatural. Mm -hmm. This is going to flow. And do you, do you see the marriage there? It doesn't say marriage. You shall be my people and I will be your God. That's marriage. That's mystical marriage. Yes, ma'am. Father, uh, from the Jewish perspective, uh, my question to you is this. Cause you to walk in my statutes. It's a cause. That's the justice. And to carefully observe my ordinance. And what's that? That's the, uh, what's the right and the left hand? The justice in one, the revelation of God, right? So, these, and this is a result of living the, command, the Ten Commandments. These are the ways He teaches you to walk and to observe. Right? So it's righteousness and justice. The statutes are righteousness. Yes. Right? Yes, go. Uh, the statutes are, excuse me, Walking, that's the justice. Yes. And the ordinances yes. are the righteousness yes. of God. So in other words, what happens inside of you is something that you know that you know is what God wants you to you, do. You know her. Right. Now, watch this. Is this good stuff? And that's what he's showing us. Is this good stuff? Yes. Are you getting it, ma'am? Yes. Am I losing you? Am I losing you, ma'am? No. Yes, ma'am. So because God is causing you to do this. Because God is causing you to do this. That's how it becomes so natural to you. That's how it becomes so natural. You got it. That's right. Ma'am, you're very smart. It becomes natural. So the natural supernatural is this is the way to really live. And who would want to go back to the way we used to live? And then when you're living with somebody who's a psychic coy, and you become a pneumatic coy. That's why I live by myself. And so what are all the what are all the psyche coys going to call you? A psyche coy. It flows when it's caused in it now. Put a little note in your knower. This is the way God wants you to be. When all of this starts to happen, ready? I get to hear from God. I get to do what God wants me to do. I can know that I am on the right track. Good stuff? Oh, absolutely. Father, you just described the cross. 
Uh, yes. <laughs> now, I, 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 now, in order to do that, he uses it. Look at verse 29. I will deliver you from all your uncleanness. Now, what does that mean? When, when you're speaking of Judaism, clean and unclean, what are you thinking of? Remember we did that passage in Romans the other night. Clean and unclean. Plus, you're going to be clean. What does he mean by that? There's a Jewish meaning of that. And what's the meaning? I'm going to make you the sacrifice that's lifted up to God. You are the pure sacrifice. Remember, you can only come to God if you offer Him a pure sacrifice. What have we offered God during our lives? Can I be honest with us? Sometimes, God's not going to condemn any of us for our past ignorance. Sometimes we offer God a godly book. But now you're, He takes away all of our uncleannesses. That's a sacrificial term of animals being killed and being offered up. So that's why Jesus had to be the perfect lamb sacrificed for us to be offered up to God so that you and I could be saved. So now he says, um, let me take away all that's unclean. And guess what? You won't see my life anymore with filth in the mouth, filth in the mind. You see, when the Holy Spirit is, is the author of my salvation, He cleanses me. When I accepted Jesus, my personal Lord and Savior, at the age of 13, the first thing that went was bad words. Now, I didn't say bad words all the time. But being around the kids of the, of the block, you just got to copy everybody. So I had to be cool and say those words too. But I'd rather choke right now than never say those words again. So God is cleaning my act up. Are you getting this? No. The Holy Spirit showed me other things. Go with me. We've got a few minutes left. Is this good? All right. Go with me to Isaiah. Go over to Isaiah. The Holy Spirit showed me this this morning. Well, we've got some Isaiah's to do. Let's see. Um, go with me, please, to the people we shall be. If you go with me in Isaiah 33. just on Mount Zion. I think we really missed what happened out there. Zion. Fill with justice and righteousness and he'll be the stability of your times. So who's the stability of everything we do? The Holy Spirit. Abundance of salvation, wisdom and knowledge for the fear of the Lord is his treasure. That's what we're going to have. Sounds good? Wow. And then when you have that, if you jump with me to verse 17, your eyes will see the king in all his beauty. They will behold the land that stretches far. We're going to see things that we've never seen before. Did we hear that before? Eye has not seen, ear has not heard. Didn't we just study that a long time? How many of you are going to start seeing things? This is preparing for the final Pentecost. 
What's the final Pentecost? You wake up one day and you start seeing things and hearing things you've never seen and heard. Now, look at uh, verse 18. Your mind will muse on the terror. Where is he who counted? Where is he who weighed the tribute? Where is he who counted the towers? You will see no more the insolent people. They're all gone. You can wake up and say, are we going to have this anymore? When you believe naturally in the supernatural, your whole past life, what you feared is gone. When you live naturally in the supernatural. Good stuff? You will see no more the insolent people, the people of obscure speech which you cannot comprehend. What, what does that mean, the people of, of obscure speech? In Isaiah's time, the enemy came in from the north. Did they speak Hebrew? No. They spoke a different language. And what do you say? They don't know what the heck they're talking about. So what's going to be removed when you have the Holy Spirit? All obscure speech. When God speaks to us, it's going to be absolutely clear. You're going to know what to do. You're going to know how to act. You're going to know where to go. You're going to know what to say. You're going to know what to preach, from my point of view. Is that good? Stammering in a, in a tongue which you cannot understand. What was that? That's the, that's the other language coming in. This is before they were forced to speak Aramaic, which would be Jesus' language. Look upon Zion, the city of our appointed feast. Everything flows out of Zion. Let me prove it to you in another point. Ultimately, Zion is going to be the throne of God on earth. And that was for Pentecost and the Holy Spirit. I wish I could go on another tangent, but I won't. Now look at this. Your eyes will see Yerushalayim. A quiet habitation, an immovable tent, whose stakes will never be plucked up and nor any of its course. We're seeing the New Jerusalem. But there, but there the Lord in majesty will be for us a place of broad rivers and streams. When you go to heaven, what are you going to see in heaven? Revelation says there's going to be streams and waters. Revelation 22. Flowing from the Merkabah, where no galley with oars can go, no state of ship can pass. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our ruler, the Lord is our king, he will save us. How do we think that's good? Wow, ever say wow. Wow. How many like the Holy Spirit with you? So we say, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for God. We say, every valley shall be lifted up. Every mountain shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together, and as they flesh. What's going to happen to the flesh? Gone. When you go to heaven, what's going to happen to you? First Corinthians 15. Does everybody know when you go to heaven? Are you going? By God's grace? You know what's going to happen to you in heaven? You're going to have a spiritual body. That means when you talk to people, a thousand percent true what you're saying. Hey, I love you. Oh, oh God, I thought you mean it. <laughs> Come over to my house for dinner. You mean it. <laughs> you don't, you, you stop saying we got to get together. God is good. You mean it. <laughs> because we live totally in the spirit. That's the difference between pneumatic coin and psychic coin. That's the difference.
Is that good? Now, how do I live naturally in the supernatural? I've got to ask God to take, give me a new heart. Psalm 51, Psalm 32. How do I, how do I get it naturally in the supernatural? Breathe upon me your Holy Spirit. How do I live naturally in the supernatural? I will obey your commandments. I will see them all matched up with one another. They're all interconnected. This is how God originally wrote the commandments, I told you. And in the flesh, I don't want to live in the flesh. You see, the Bible says in Romans 8, verse 2, there's only one person and another person that can live in the flesh, Catholics believe. The first person is Jesus. It's as though he was in the likeness of sinful flesh. He had everything that I had, but he never sinned in the sinful flesh. Imagine, are, are you reading it the same way I read it? Jesus was born in sinful flesh, but he didn't sin. So when he's walking along, the temptations were there like you have it. So when I have, when I want to live natural and supernatural, I said, Lord, we've got to talk. I mentioned my temptation to him. And I said, Lord, when you have that same temptation, is that good? I want to pluck their eyeballs out. You had that temptation, Lord. How did you deal with it? Let this Holy Spirit come. When it takes out of my heart the stone, that's why the Ten Commandments I told you a thousand times are written in stone, because God is saying to you and me, you're going to get these commandments whether you like it or not, even if they're right on stone. They're coming to you. They're going to be written down. And you can't erase them because it's on stone. And so what happens to me when my flesh goes, God says, Bill, I'm going to put it in my heart. And when he puts it in my heart, the Holy Spirit comes in. And then you know what I start saying? The craziest thing. I want to obey you, Lord. What are your commandments? And then I say the weirdest thing from 1 John chapter 4. Your commandments are not burdensome. 1 John 4. How many love, love living naturally in the supernatural? Today I declare the word of God is true. I declare you can have the mind of God in Christ Jesus. I declare you can live supernaturally. And if you do these things, I promise you, you're going to hear from God. You're going to get number two, supernatural revelation. Number three, you're going to hear the voice of God yourself. Number four, you're going to start saying to me, God said this to me. And then maybe then I'll start listening to you. And you know what? You'll be accurate. That's how I know that God will say certain things to you. And when you say, the, share the revelation with me, one to another, can you imagine if we all sat around and said, do you know what God said? Can you imagine what that conversation would be like if it was true, genuine, and real? Yes, ma'am. Just a question, Father, about uh, this, this verse here, whose stakes will never be plucked out, nor any of its cords yes. be broken. The yes. cords. What is the sense of the cords? Locked in. Locked in. Remember, let's think what they thought. Let's think what they thought. Okay. They see Jerusalem as one tent. Right. How did how did they travel? Tent. Yes. Jerusalem can't be moved. It's going to be a cord locked in, so that's going to be the place. Oh. It's locked in. That's Zion. It's tied up. The house was knocked down twice. The temple. Right. But the tent will be locked in. Why? Do you want to go one step further? Because the tent is the flesh of Christ. Amen. Because he died outside, outside the walls of Jerusalem. 
he died outside the experience of Zion. Everybody know Jesus, your Lord and Savior? Yes. Did you get good stuff? It is. Heavenly Father, we just ask your blessings upon us as we finish 1 Corinthians 2. Not finishing, I'm sure there's like many more nuggets in there. But Father, help us to really live supernaturally in the natural. And help us live naturally in the supernatural. Because this is what you've caused us to do. Lord, clean me. Cleanse me. And I shall be cleansed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us us. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God be come and come on the and do thou praise the heavenly host. By thy power of God, cast us out Satan and all the evil spirits who cry about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Good stuff.